Hey guys, Paul here from Fat Bender Bootcamp, and I want to welcome you on all on board to the uh, nine day detox that I'm running you. I've completely revamped what we've been doing with the nine day detox. I've made it nice and fresh for you guys who have done it previously. Um, so we've got some pretty exciting things to do. Now this video that I'm doing right now is to basically introduce you into the program, what we're going to be doing, um, and the reasons behind what we're going to be doing. As I said, this isn't one of those... Um, you know, skinny shakes, magic pills, confusion in the weight loss, you know, world. It's not going to be that. This is going to be that breakthrough because if you listen to the things and the steps that I'm going to be teaching you, it's going to educate you. So from what I know, is going to be taught onto you. And I'm going to, you know, really simplify it as well so you don't have to worry about, you know, um, how things work or why things work. I'll give you that information. If you've got any questions, I'll certainly answer it for you. But I just want to make it as simple for you to follow as possible, but at the same time for you to know why you're doing it as well. Um, I think often people jump from diet to diet because they just want that quick fix. Well, you know, we're not going to be focusing purely on that quick fix. We're going to be focusing on really how we can start making those changes. Uh, and then by Learning the reason why is going to say, okay, that's why we're doing this. Now, when you detox correctly, uh, I say correctly, because there's so many detoxes and, you know, all these liquid detoxes and, you know, that are, that are out there, but that are doing so much damage and harm to your body. Now, what I teach all my clients is that we're not chasing fat loss, we're chasing health. And with health comes fat loss. But anything that cuts calories would be classified as a detox. If you cut calories from your diet, basically your fat cells are going to be start releasing um, fat into the body. Now, when um, we uh, eat toxics, I'm going to talk you through a, a lot of toxics that we, we are consuming in today's 21st century polluted world, is um, when we eat toxins, they get surrounded by fat and put into fat cells. So if we're going to be cutting calories, fat's released, but that was binding onto those toxins, the toxin also gets released into the blood, which is great. We get rid of the toxin that was being held by the fat cell, and with it, the fat disappears as well. But at the same time, if you're still putting toxins into the body, or if you're not providing your body with an, the nutrition to protect you, and the right antioxidants to protect you from the damaging effects of those toxins, then you are going to get very, very sick. Um, so, for example, you know, these liquid detoxes that effectively will detox you by cutting calories, um, they're going to end up by putting a lot of uh, toxins into your blood and then you're going to get sick because they're not providing you the nutrition to deal with those toxins. In a moment I'm going to talk to you exactly what we're going to take out from your diet, but then I'm going to tell you about what we're going to include. So 50% of the battle is what you take out. The other half of the battle is what we're going to include into um, making sure that diet is clean and allowing us to, to keep the weight off after we've dropped it as well, preventing ourselves from getting sick, okay? So there's many things, there's many reasons why people are overweight these days, why we are suffering with an obesity crisis, why the West Midlands has the highest obesity in, the, in, in Europe, yeah? 30% of adults in the West Midlands are now classed as obese. Um, so there's many reasons why that is. Uh, because we're living in a toxic world. We have electromagnetic fields that affect our body. We, the, from the shampoos that we wash, wash with, from the, the uh, deodorants that we use, from the toothpaste that we, that we put on our teeth, from the water that we're drinking. There's so many things, the medicines, antibiotics. There's so many things that affect ourselves. And at the same time, it's how and when we're eating as well. The timings that we're, we're eating those nutrients. Um... Two factors are going to determine whether you're going to lose weight or gain weight, and that is whether your breakfast was clean, and 99% of the times, what people think is a clean breakfast isn't, okay? Cereals are not a clean breakfast, and there's no such thing as healthy cereals, okay? And the other thing that determines whether you're going to gain weight or lose weight is whether you go to bed on an empty stomach or not. For example, if you go to bed on a full stomach, you're going to be releasing insulin, okay? Whether you ate protein, carbohydrates, or fats um, for that meal, whatever you consumed is going to release insulin. Now, insulin is the antichrist of growth hormone, and you want growth hormone high when you're sleeping. 
okay? This technique, this, this thing that I'm teaching right now, is known as the fountain of youth. Your growth hormone is what keeps you young, youthful, keeps you um, with lean muscle and low body fat, it keeps the wrinkles away, it keeps you high of energy in life, and it's reason why over in Hollywood they're paying like $3,000 a shot just to have it injected into themselves. Well, you're not going to be able to, you're not going to have to do that um, as long as you get it right with your diet and your sleep. One way you're not going to be losing weight is if you're not sleeping. So I want, for the nine days and the detox, I want to make sure you're all getting a good night's sleep. Okay? At least 10.30, we'll get into bed at least. And then we're waking up, refresh, refresh before the alarm clock goes off in the morning. If we're waking up, um, if we're waking up and the alarm clock is waking us up in the morning, and we're needing the alarm clock to wake up in the morning, that's telling you right there that your hormones are off, and um, you know it's not you're not waking up to your body's natural body clock, which is bad news, um, especially for weight loss as well as health. Okay, so we want to be waking ourselves up. Our hormones we want to be waking ourselves up. If you're one of these people that are requiring cups of coffee to get throughout the day, or first thing in the morning, then you know that your hormones are way out of sync, and you're more than likely not only suffering with weight gain, but also um, stress in your life. And if you're stressed, you're not going to be cutting out weight. So you, I, I'm, I'm trying to keep it simple, but you can start to see where we're picturing lots of ways, lots of avenues that are preventing us from losing weight and staying lean. Um, I'm going to show you the exact plan, the 9 day detox, which is just totally simplified for you to follow the plan to nail all of those things that we need in the coffin to, to, really, um, to really achieve that result. Okay, so it's really simplified for you, but I want to make sure that you understand why you're doing it at the same time as well. So, yeah, growth hormone is what's going to keep us lean, healthful, healthy and youthful. Um, but if you're eating before bed and you're going to bed on a full stomach, insulin goes high and growth, growth hormone is not produced during the night, during your sleep. Um, so it's really important that we do go to bed on an empty stomach for that very reason that we want growth hormone to be high in the morning and we're going to be dropping a lot of body fat by doing that as well, okay? Um, you know, so we're, we're talking about hormones here. Now, hormones travel in the blood. So one of the things that we want to be focusing on during the nine-day detox is getting healthy blood, okay? So, um, I mean, healthy blood is... One thing that I haven't included in the nine day detox meal plans, but I would do, um, you know, I'd throw it in there in a meal, is liver, eating liver. Um, you want to eat beef liver, and you want to ideally shoot for grass fed beef liver, um, but we want to start building up the blood and healthy blood. One thing that we want to be doing is drinking a lot of clean water to help the blood out. We want to be eating a lot of um, greens, so spinach, kale, broccoli. Um, watercress, rocky, we want to be eating a lot of that, a, a big daily serving of your greens every single day. Your greens contain chlorophyll, chlorophyll is the same makeup as hemoglobin, which is going to allow a lot more oxygen to be transported around your body. Um, we want to alkalize the body as much as we can. Um, you know, an acidic environment is a diseased environment where disease um, you know, can can grow, bacteria can grow, and we end up getting fat. So we're very much chasing that health route here, guys, um, with 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 your diet. So let me just tell you exactly what we're going to be cutting out over the nine days. Um, by all means, I do not want you to eat any of these foods for at least the nine days, if not ever. The awesome thing about this educational program, the nine day detox, is that you'll cut these foods out, and at first it'll be hard, and you might even get detox headaches for five days or so and that will pass but the cool thing is is that your taste buds will change some of the foods that I'm going to ask you to eat will probably um, you will probably taste ran rancid at first okay you know all these people that say you know they're worse than five-year-old kids yeah they, they say I can't eat that I don't like the taste of it I'm refusing to eat that well you know what if you're stuck in that way you're screwed you really are I can't, I can't help you you're gonna have to Step outside of your comfort zone with a diet, with a workout, with your life. And when you do that, you will grow and you will expand outside of that comfort zone. But um, as I say, if, you're, if your body's very acidic, you're probably going to find a lot of the foods that I'm asking to eat um, is going to taste a bit rancid. If you're used to eating these foods, you're probably going to find the foods a bit rancid. But after the nine days, your taste buds will change. Your cravings will change. 
Okay? And when the cravings change, this awesome thing will happen after the nine days. You might introduce some bread into your diet. And then you might notice that eating the bread made you feel bloated. It will. Um, then you'll have this awesome psychological change, mind shift. And you go, that made me feel so bad. I can eat if I want to. I've got no hang-ups about that. I'm not going to put any hang-ups about that. I can eat if I want to. But when I do, I actually notice that I feel bloated. Okay? I also get really, a really nose. I also get mind fog. All these things that happen when we eat wheat, when we eat bread, pasta. Also, soups and sauces will contain wheat as thickness. So we want to cut out wheat. And, um, and when you introduce these foods back into your diet, you'll notice the effects they actually have on your body. So then you'll change your mind, your mindset, a change, and you, you won't prefer these foods over real good nutritious foods. And that right there, my friends, is where you'll maintain your weight loss because you won't go back to old ways. And if you do, then that was stupid of you because you did the hard work, okay? So here's what I want you to cut out, guys, over the next nine days, and things will change for you in the long run. I want you to cut out wheat. That's bread, pasta. Um, that's soups and sauces that contain wheat, biscuits, cakes. A lot of your foods in the supermarket, things that you're going to be purchasing, contain wheat and the protein in wheat, which is called gluten. And um, it's indigestible by everybody. It's not You can't digest it. And the reason why wheat in particular will bloat your belly is it because it'll inflame the intestines and it'll, blow, it'll push your belly out. You'll also get a runny nose, a headache, and lots of other problems because basically your body does not recognize what this gluten is, what this wheat is, and uh, it'll send out an autoimmune response. Your body will basically try and get rid of it. So you'll get the runny nose and the headaches. The same will happen with dairy. Um, lactose, which is the enzyme, sorry, lactase, which is the enzyme that breaks down milk sugar, lactose, is killed off in um, the pasteurization of milk. So pasteurized and hom homogenized milk is... Um, it's going to be bad for us because it's not, raw milk would be better, but it's not actually going to contain, once it's been homogenized and pasteurized, the enzymes that we need to digest it. It's also killing off the good bacteria as well. So then you have to drink the, the yakult, the, the good bacteria, because the, the pasteurization killed it off. Um, what happens in homogenization as well is the fat molecules will be pressed through tiny little holes, like a sieve. At high, high pressures, and when it's pushed, these fat molecules split. So when you then drink it, your gut won't actually recognise what it's actually just um, digest. It'll see it as a, as a as a foreign body, an alien. And then again, your body sends out that autoimmune response to you know figure it out, sends out the white blood cells to um, as a precaution. So your body's not going to. It's, it's basically almost um, in a state, in a stress of where it's, it's got to almost fight off um, a foreign body. So we don't want this. We want to detox. We want to give our body a chance to thrive. Now, yeah, you could get by eating these foods, but imagine yourself punching your arm over and over and over again. Eventually, you'll go numb. Well, your body actually desensitizes itself when it keeps eating these foods. So somebody that's been eating these foods for years and years and years will be in a state that they're just used to. Yeah, they're numb. They don't really notice the effects that these things are having. But I can guarantee the process will eventually lead to chronic disease and their, their body slowly breaking down. Okay? So it's very important that we do cut these foods out. Okay? Again, for our health. All right? If you do want to live a good quality life and thrive, not just survive, then we've got to cut these foods out. So the other one is dairy. We also want to cut out sugar. There is no good sugar, guys. Sugar is, is bad for us. And, I mean, for example, cancer thrives on sugar. Bacteria thrives on sugar. So if we want to become sick, all right, provide yourself with sugar into your diet. And by cutting out sugar, we're actually going to um, allow for, you, you know, our body to start healing itself. Um, we're also going to be able to change our taste buds that crave these certain foods as well. Uh, I'm not saying that you should eat no sugar or low sugar or um, sugar alternatives because that is far worse, believe it or not. The chemicals that they use in um, sugar-free products is far more worse than the sugar products. Diet Coke is worse than your Coke, okay? With that said, I don't want to have either, certainly on the nine-day detox, okay? You know, I'm not, again, I'm not putting any hang-ups, like you should never eat this again, okay? 
but we've certainly got to get out of the state that our society is in of, of just always eating these foods and getting away from it, um, and uh, and create a, a, a new a new sort of um, you know a lifestyle, a new sort of belief around food. I also wanted to cut out coffee. Now, there's a lot of talk about coffee, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's got properties that help you, uh, whether it's good for your training, and things like that. But I want you on the 9 Day Detox to completely cut it out. In my opinion, coffee isn't good. You can enjoy coffee, and that's cool. Let's not put any hang ups about coffee, but it's not good. Um, coffee is going to stimulate your cells, which is then going to re release a lot, of, uh, a lot of cortisol, a lot of stress into your body, um, a lot of adrenaline into your body. And if we. Oftentimes, people don't know how to drink coffee. They use it to keep themselves awake, and they use it to keep it throughout the day and get more work done. If you're doing that, I guarantee you're probably on the road to chronic fatigue, where one day you'll wake up and you go, you feel like you've hit, been hit by a buzz, and you wonder why you're depressed. You've got nothing to be depressed about, but you wonder why you just can't get out of bed in the morning. Yeah? Chronic disease. I've got a book somewhere. I don't know where it is. There we go. No, it's not. There's a great book um, that you can pick up. There we go. It's called Adrenal Fatigue um, by James Wilson. You pick up that book, Adrenal Fatigue, all about uh, you know, the 21st stress syndrome, and all about that chronic fatigue where people are just literally waking up and thinking, why I've got no energy, why I've got no get up and go. Well, if cortisol's high, one reason why that is is testosterone, for you, you, know, you guys, is going to be low. Okay, we've got no testosterone, we've got no get up and go. So, you know, if all these hormones are off, then you're certainly going to be feeling the effects of them if you're not already. 9-day detox is designed to get around that as the simplest way that we can with our nutrition. Okay, so I want you completely off caffeine for at least nine days. You'll probably notice headaches when you cut this out. You'll probably notice headaches. I also want you to cut out alcohol. Um, that's a given, guys. You, you, you know that. I mean, alcohol is just literally, literally liquid sugar. So when we have a lot of sugar... Um, when we have a lot of sugar into the diet, guys, your insulin is going to go right up. And if insulin is up and too high, then your body is just going to convert that as body fat. So drinking a lot of alcohol or having, taking a lot of sugar is just going to end up in body fat. Okay? There's nutrient timing where, I mean, you need carbs. I'm not going to tell you to cut carbs from your diet. But there's nutrient timing where after a workout is the ideal time for you to eat carbs. During the evening is the ideal time for you to eat carbs. You need at least 120 grams of carbs per day just for your brain to function. So cutting carbs is a bad, bad idea. You need carbs into your diet because if you, your brain's not functioning, then you're going to be making stupid ideas and reaching for quick hit calories. Also, fat is burned in a carbohydrate flame. So if you're not getting carbohydrates into your diet, you're not going to be burning body fat. Okay? So you need carbs into your diet, at least 120 grams for your brain to function, and then have carbs post-workout. Follow the 9-day detox, you can't go wrong. Um, processed foods we want to be cutting out as well, guys. Anything with chemicals, or anything with a, I've got nothing, anything with a food label on that, that's got, chemical, you know, got, got stuff that you can't pronounce, you do not eat it, okay? I've got a saying that if you didn't fall from a tree, grow from the ground, swim in the sea, walk the land, or fly in the sky, you don't eat it. You stay well away from it, okay? Um, we want to be getting good fresh food, but we'll talk about more of that in a moment. So no processed food. And at the bottom, I've also put no tap water, okay? For the nine days that you're on this detox, I want you to only drink mineral water, or if you've got the expense to do it, go get yourself uh, an osmosis machine, get it fitted at home, and you got your own clean water. Probably in the long run, it'll work out cheaper to do that. Um, but for nine days, only bottled water. The reason being... Why I don't want you to have any water, uh, tap water is there's so many heavy metals that are in the water. Heavy metals are toxins um, that are going to be going into your, into your cells and is going to prevent you from losing weight. The worst thing about um, your tap water in our area in the West Midlands, not everywhere, funny enough, it's in the West Midlands where, um, that's another story, but where you, you kind of want people going into... Um, whether manufacturing or like a conveyor belt or people going into 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 jobs, into factories, etc. There's fluoride in our water. Okay, now fluoride was used in concentration camps by Hitler. Fluoride was put into the water to make the the uh, the prisoners docile. Okay, so what a better way to to control the uh, the masses 
by um, putting fluoride in the water. Hitler did it. So why is our government doing it? I don't know. You, you, you know, guys, I'm not, I'm not saying it's a conspiracy or anything like that, but it, do, it does certainly sound like one. But yeah, the, you know, history tells us that fluoride was put in our water. So history tells us that Hitler put it in our water to make, um, to make um, prisoners docile, so they didn't retaliate or, you know, they weren't aggressive or anything like that. And it's in our water in the West Midlands, all right? It's not down in it's not down in Stratford. I went to see a, meet a friend a few months ago, and it's not down in Stratford. So in Shakespeare's country, uh, there ain't water, there ain't fluoride in the water over there, but it is, it is in the West Midlands. Now fluoride, a couple of things, it's going to make you docile. Okay, so it's going to affect the penile gland, which makes you docile. But another thing, it's going to for, for weight gain, it's going to strip your thyroid gland of iodine. Okay, so if you've got any thyroid problems, or you're on thyroxine or anything like that. Uh, shoot me a message. I've got some steps that I want you to follow to help you with that and get you off thyroxine. But if you're um, if you've been if the iodine's been stripped off your thyroid gland, then your metabolism, your thyroid regulates your metabolism. Thyroid can't function. Your metabolism goes down low. Okay, so get off tap water, fluoride toothpaste, and mouthwash. You should be using. Or I want you to go out and buy an aloe vera. Um, uh, toothpaste. Okay, so go get, go get up, go uh, not not immediately or anything like that. I'm just saying, you know, get yourself off all fluoride products. Certainly, if you've got any thyroid problems. Um, okay, so shut the door window. Okay, so those are the things, the seven things that I want you to cut out over the next nine days. Um, the things that I want you to include into your diet. You know, you think you're probably thinking right now. Paul, you've, you've told me everything that I can't eat, but what can I? what's left to eat? You know, you've taken all my nice stuff away, all the cakes and the bread and all this. Okay, well, what I do want you to eat, guys, are I want you to eat unlimited amounts of meat, fish, poultry, game meat, okay? You know, if we can eat organ meat like liver, that, that's brilliant, okay? We're going to get a, new, a lot of nutrition from that. Nutritionally, liver is probably the most sound item you could be eating, okay? Nutritionally. There's so much good that's in it. So get yourself some lamb's liver or some beef liver. Um, I've provided you with the nine-day meal plans, okay, which is great, easy to follow. You can't go wrong following it. But if you want to be a bit more creative or work what's what's in your kitchen, just stick to this. Cut those foods out and stick to eating as much meat, poultry, game meat, um, all the meat as you like, and fish as you like. Fresh vegetables and fruit, unlimited amounts, as much as you like, if you're hungry, eat some of it, always shoot for organic if you can guys, where possible go for organic, the reason being pesticides and herbicides that are sprayed onto, um, that are sprayed onto crops, onto your, your fruits and your veggies, are highly estrogenic and will relate to estrogen fat, now I'm not saying estrogen is bad, well it is if it's being sprayed onto plants, but I'm not saying estrogen is bad, but the fact that if you're overweight, you're going to be estrogen dominant, you're going to have too much estrogen. So you've got to stay away from soy products such as these these um, shakes, I'm not going to name any, name any names for legal reasons, but all these, these shakes that are coming out, these soy shakes, that a lot of trainers are selling you, you've heard me, you know, um, talk about on uh, on social media and all that. Um, so I want you to stay away from soy products as well. But you want to stay away from all estrogen products. So eating um, your fruits, your veggies, unlimited amounts. Berries are awesome to snack on. Nuts and seeds are great snacks. Okay? No more than a handful of nuts a day because obviously they do contain fats but they are the good fats that we do want that are actually going to prevent carb cravings. Okay? And it's the carbs that tend to make us fat. So get your good fats into your diet. I also want you to um, drink at least um, two to three liters of water a day. I actually want you to drink one liter per 20 kilograms of your body weight per day of clean mineral water. Um, you can also eat um, rice, rice noodles, oats, oat cakes. They're all good. Um, good forms of carbs. You're going to get a lot of carbs from like potatoes. Sweet potatoes are even better. Um, but they're all good sources of your carbohydrates. You, you could shoot for some like um, uh, some wheat and gluten free um, bread or dairy free bread. You could shoot for that. But again, you don't want a lot of those those, those items because they're going to in increase um, sugar, blood sugar, and then result in, in weight gain. So be careful of those those those, those foods. You're you're more 
uh, your sweet potatoes, your roots and your veggies are better sources for carbohydrates because they they don't have a higher insulin spike. Whereas your rice flour um, and your and your your wheat free flour tends to. Um, so although your wheat free plaster would be okay to shoot for, um, it's still going to have a high uh, blood spike as well. So if weight weight loss is our goal, then try to stay away from those. Certainly for the nine days. Just stick to the plumbing, you can't go wrong. Um, so that's it in a nutshell, guys, what you want to be following, what you want to be doing with nutrition-wise. Um, you, you're never going to go hungry on this. This isn't a starvation diet. You're not going to skip any meals or, or go for long periods of time not eating. The only period of time that you're not going to be eating is a good four hours before you go to bed. So you go, and empty on a, you go to bed on an empty stomach. And then you're going to wake up in the morning where growth hormone's gone high. And you're going to be feeling a lot more youthful, a lot more energy, feeling greater. And you're going to be dropping a lot more body fat as well. And then we get breakfast clean. If you get breakfast clean, guys, you know, you're going to get the rest of the day clean. Okay, so make sure you're getting the breakfast clean. And you'll get the rest of the day clean as well. Um, so that's it in a nutshell, guys. I want you to go download the plan now, the 9-Day Detox. Get started on there. Um, you've also, I've, I've set you for this month, 21 workouts that I want you to be completing. Uh, with the program, which is going to be good fun. Um, so I want you to complete the workouts as well, guys. Uh, at home, I'll be sending those through. Uh, There's going to be the, the three workouts a day, basically. I'm also going to include a lot of walking into your program, because I, I want you to do walking. I want you to de-stress as much as you can. So meditation, yoga, qigong, walking. Let's use those to bring stress levels down. Because as I say, if you're stressed, you're not going to be dropping body fat. Um, so that's it guys in a nutshell. If you've got any questions, info at fatbetterbootcamp.com. Post them up in the Facebook group as well. Uh, make sure you get interacting on there guys. I highly recommend that you take before photos. Front side back wearing tight clothing or your underwear or swimsuit. And then after the nine day detox and as we go into the future as a reference point when we take more photos after photos in the future you use these before photos as a reference point of how far you've come. My clients always kick themselves when they don't do this, so I'm just saying do do this because, you know, forget about the scales as such for now because, um, you know, your, your biggest measurement of fat loss is going to be your how your clothes are talking to you and the, the, the measurements and the photos are going to talk to you. Because you see every single little change every single day, you don't really notice the big changes, but your friends and family will. Your friends and family will go, wow, you've lost weight. Uh, you've lost weight, especially if you're surrounding yourself with the right kind of friends anyway. Um, you know, if you're surrounding yourself with the, the wrong kind of friends that are worried about you losing weight and then them being left behind, they're the friends that certainly for nine days you've got to stay away from. They're called fat friends who will sabotage your program. They're the same kind of friends that say, you know, only, only uh, enjoy, you know, everything in moderation is okay or just have one or they're, they're trying to sabotage your, your, your efforts guys so make sure you certainly for the nine days you stay clear of those guys but yeah do take your before photos because your, your friends and family don't see those little gaps in between okay they just see the big gaps and then that's obviously they see the big difference but you will see every little change as you go along this process um, keep it up guys no toe dipping okay dive straight in give this all you've got for a good nine days as I say the best day to start is a Saturday because it's then Saturday and Sunday gets you ready for the working week, and then sandwiched together with a final weekend on Saturday, Sunday, um, the, the, the weekend, weekend after, you're basically doing a long week, so it goes, it absolutely flies by, and you're going to get effectively a phenomenal result in just nine days. So let me know how you're going, guys. I want a lot of interaction, a lot of support, a lot of communication in the group. I'm there watching you. I want you to take photos of your meals and post them up into the group. So I can really keep an eye on the cooking, and if you're you're messing anything up, I can keep an eye and give you give you um you know some encouragement and some some uh, some feedback on that as well, guys. So there you go. Thanks for listening, and I will catch you in the group.